Hey guys, when we left you last week, we were out on the trail doing a shakedown in preparation for our big trip to the far north. But right now, we are back at the island. We got a couple of calls uh, that were very important to us. One, our boat was ready to be picked up. And two, our friends at Sud Sudbury Solar gave us a call that they can come and help us install our solar panels. Uh, we also have a quick update from Caroline, which a lot of you have been asking about, so stay tuned. Welcome to another episode of The, the Epic, Epic Family Road, Road Trip. So in order to be able to head on these long distant trips that we have planned, certain things had to be ready at the island. First of all, we're switching over from winter to summer, and you've seen some of that transition. This week we were able to get the water going. That's a big one for us. Uh, all winter long we've been bringing out five, six, five gallon pails of water a day, uh, breaking ice and pumping it up and so on. And so for flushing and showers and washing dishes and all that stuff, we had to carry the water in. And now we've been able to get the water system up and running and literally all we have to do is turn on the tap, which in our old life that was just what you expect. But after doing a whole winter of carrying buckets, there's no luxury quite like the luxury of having a hot water shower whenever you want it, uh, hot water to do dishes and so on. We didn't really share it on our videos, but right at the end of the winter, the pipe on our indoor uh, toilet froze and so we couldn't use the toilet anymore. Thankfully we have an outhouse back here um, and so we had to go really old school and, and start using the outhouse. So now for everything to be thought out, working properly and, and you can just hit a button and flush the toilet, it is uh, pretty nice. So we got the water going, that's number one. Uh, we're going to be picking up our boat. We've been using one of my brother's fishing boats along with ours but we had a two stroke uh, 30 horsepower Mercury on there and we ran into some engine problems and we had some it became a big deal to try to fix we hope to be able to fix it at some point but we made the decision last year to purchase a 40 horse yamaha just like the one on my brother's boat and so we were able to pick that up this week and it has been amazing all right so this is exciting day we're here at the yamaha dealership and they said our boat is ready so we're going to go and pick it up all right, well, thank you so much. Oh, well, you're welcome. Have a awesome. great trip and enjoy. In order to be able to leave on long trips, we had to make sure that we had a constant source of power. Now, as you know, we put in the batteries from Battleborn and that whole system last fall. And so that was amazing. Over the winter, we could charge up the batteries by generator and have many days of uh, constant power. But we didn't have time just before the ice set in and all that to get solar panels installed. So we finally were able to pick them up a few weeks ago, as you saw, and then uh, this week, our friends from Sudbury Solar Solutions came over, Dan, the installer, and he helped us get the solar panels up and running. So the first thing was we had ordered these uh, trifecta stands. Um, they come from Cabin Depot in uh, New Brunswick, I believe. But um, what we liked about this whole setup is that you can tilt the panels. So right now we've got them straight up, which is probably the best for the summer because the sun is above us. And it'll catch sun all day long. In fact, we're noticing uh, as soon as the sun comes up in the morning, like even on the horizon, these are putting out uh, power. The boys and I put these together. It's very easy assembly. And, uh, and then we carried them out here onto the rock, which is the position where we get the best sun, uh, summer and winter. And uh, when Dan arrived, he began drilling them into the rock.
obviously these would become a big sail in the wind and we do get some really high winds as, as you noticed if you watch some of our winter videos so the most important job is getting the mounting stands anchored to the rock so Dan began drilling holes for each of the, of the legs and then we drove a rebar into the rock and they are opposing on each end so they're just completely solid there's no way they could move the way they're affixed to the rocks right now so next we brought in the solar panels and began to install them on top of the mounting system they are 445 watts each and so it's 2670 I think 2670 watts that it can produce of energy even on an overcast day we're getting 1200 1300 or higher so an insane amount of power and every time we look at the panel now since this was installed the generator hasn't been needed and the uh, battery bank is at a hundred percent so overnight when these shut off it'll drop maybe ten percent if we're using a lot of power and uh, first thing in the morning it starts charging back up within an hour it's back to 100 percent and it stays there so we're really happy with the amount of output uh, the other thing about these panels is that they're bifacial meaning they, they they absorb energy from the sun on the face but also on the back side which is great especially in the winter you can pick up uh, reflection off the snow and ice and things like that so very efficient panels We've got all the panels mounted now he's wiring them together so the last thing is we run this tech cable from here from the battery bank right out to the panel so that's what we're going to do next but things are going good then he's just going to hook them up to the charge controllers uh, Pete and I dug a hole for the grounding plate and then uh, we might be able to flip the switch and have some solar power so we're pretty excited about that Oh, Dennis and I both love this. We're both passionate yeah. about the <laughs> off-grid. Yeah. I've been doing it for over 10 years now. Nice. And uh, my job is to make everybody else's relaxed time and their vacation as pleasant as possible. Yeah. So it was a uh, nice coming out here to install the solar array for Peter and his family. Uh, one of my greatest pleasures and joys to do this job. We're able to give you power, now you can charge your battery without the generator. That's a nice uh, next step, that kind of completes the whole project, so thanks a lot man. My pleasure. You guys do a great job, and uh, if you're looking for solar work and propane work on your cabin or off-grid up here in this area, we'll put a link down in the description to their uh, website. Come and see us on it, we have a big showroom with all this fun stuff to the come and play with. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good one. Peter and I have wanted to do this and now it finally happened. It's it's gonna take a bit. Kinda feels like Christmas morning all over again. And now an update from Caroline. As you know, if you've been following along, she had gone on an extended trip through Europe and uh, she's she was in Copenhagen, then in Oslo, Norway, and spent some time in Holland and in Paris, France. And she's back now, but while she was there, she something that she has been wanting to do for a long time, and Carol and I have been encouraging her as well to do, is what she's calling a year of giving back, or a year of service with our church. And so a lot of the young people her age uh, end up doing something similar to this, where you can spend a, about a year uh, abroad and some local, just giving of your talents and your time and your treasure to help others. And that fits right into our family values work, play, and care. So we're really excited for her that she's been able to arrange that. And here's a quick message from her. Hi everyone. I just wanted to give you a little update on what I am currently doing and what I will be doing over the coming months. So I'm going to be doing a year of giving back in my local area and abroad. 
and I will be spending time working with families and getting to meet new people and learning new skills. So I'm looking forward to this coming year and the coming months. I will miss helping to create the videos that you see every week on our channel, but I'm looking forward to seeing the exciting and beautiful and inspiring content that my brothers and parents have been working on and have been creating recently. It is so cool to see. But yeah, I am excited for what this year is going to bring for me and for my family and I'm looking forward to getting back to also capturing and sharing future adventures with my family for you all. See you all soon. Spring is a time of renewal and rebirth. A time for brand new dreams and adventures. The ice and snow have melted away and the seabirds have returned. The joyful chorus of a hundred songbirds and the haunting call of a distant loon echo across the water. The bears have awakened from their hibernation, and the buds of the maple trees burst forth into their full summer glory. The forest is filled with new life as moose calves, bear cubs, and fawns take their first steps under the watchful eyes of their mothers. And to all the mothers out there, we thank you for all that you do, and we wish you a wonderful and happy Mother's Day. Well, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, and a very special um, thank you to our mom. Thank you for being such a kind and supportive person and for always being there for us. But also thank you for being a very adventurous person, because if you weren't, we wouldn't be doing what we are doing. And uh, a lot of the, you know, the things we do and the places we go are your idea. You're always pushing us to try new things, but also restraining, especially me and Pete, uh, when we go a bit too far, which is probably the reason we're still alive. But uh, yeah, I'm so thankful for all the memories and experiences we've had together over the my whole life. And um, I look forward to many, many more, especially in the next upcoming year with our adventures. Hopefully some of them on two wheels. So, thank you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I'm so thankful for you and love you so much. And I'm so thankful for you because you're not only an amazing mom, but you're also the best friend. And every little thing you do, every little thing you do for us is so out of so much love and care and all of your selflessness and thoughtfulness to us means so much and has truly enriched every single day of our life. And oh, you've always been such an amazing inspiration and big example to me. And I'm so thankful for everything you do and have done for me. So I love you so much and hope you have an amazing day. Happy Mother's Day, Mother. Um, I have to say the obvious, I love you and you're the best mom ever. But uh, I also 
think that it's just a really cool thing to have a mom like you who's not afraid to go out and have an adventure and be totally comfortable in it, in fact, thrive in it. And that's whether we're in the Jeeps in the mountains or in the deserts or just about anywhere that we've been. And then uh, also recently with staying up here, up north at a you know remote cabin off the grid through an entire winter, um, you don't have all the amenities, you don't have all the things that can be nice and make it comfortable, but you always make do and actually really do extremely well in those situations and never complain. And then also, of course, you're the person who makes all these places a home, whether that's uh, camping at a campsite anywhere in the world or up here at the cabin. It's uh, the cozy meals and all the stuff you do to make something special every single day. So yeah, I can't really say enough. I can't say it in a short enough time here, but uh, I love you. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. All right, so we're gonna be helping mom make some delicious handmade uh, hamburgers and some potato salad and stuff like that since it's such a beautiful sunny day and it's Mother's Day. So she's gonna get the Barbie ready and then we'll start making the patties. So good, those jalapenos. I thought the dog's name was Jacob. Maybe. Very strict rule about feeding Jacob at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. And then the just next scene is feeding. I'm just finishing up packing up the dry goods. I'm putting it in an aloe box this time um, just to keep it's uh, safe and scent proof. Um, we're going to be using some of these on our drives and if it's just too buggy one night and just keeping it again really simple and clean. But yeah, so we're going to head on over there and just finish tidying up and getting it all ready to go for our big adventure. It's really, really exciting. <laughs> Day daffodils. They're so cute. I planted them last uh, fall and now they're all starting to bloom. But these two are blooming today. 
yeah, I have a few all around here. So it's nice to see that they came up this year and they'll keep on coming up. All right, so we've got pretty much everything done that we needed to get done at the island. Uh, so we're packing up to go. I just want to take a minute and show you, I've got the map here of Canada, and I'm going to show you basically our route, where we're, where we're headed. This is the map Carol and I took all the way up to the Arctic last year. You can see our route right across, we went across Canada and right up here to Northwest Territories. This time we're heading more eastward, so we're here in the Ontario region, and we're going to be heading up into, into Quebec, and then we'll cross up here, and you'll see it's a very small dark road here this is called the james bay road so this is hudson's bay this huge body of water and then the, at the bottom here is james bay and so this little road you see here is called james bay road and we're going to head up and hopefully camp right on the bay and then we go back south again and we take this little road all the way out here and that's called the trans tiaga road and it is as you can see i mean this whole area is unpopulated pretty much just a few communities along the way so once we get out to the end of the trans tiaga road it's a it's an out and back we will be 750 kilometers from the nearest uh village or gas station or anything like that so it's known as the most remote road in north america and uh, by looking at the map it certainly is it's just in the middle of nowhere but we're excited to get up and in, uh, into that area explore a section of quebec that we've never seen we've been down at you know montreal and quebec city along the bottom along the saint lawrence but not way way up north here it's as far north as you can drive in the summer in quebec so um yeah it's going to be an exciting trip and uh we can't wait to take you with us In the meantime, we'll, we'll see you down, down the road. road. Yay. 